Okay. Hey guys, thank you for joining. Uh, welcome to everybody that's uh, joining in to Invisible Jobs, Open Opportunities in TV and Film and How to Break Through. Um, my name is Alex Queen. I am a producer uh, from Baltimore, live in LA, still got my 410 number forever and always. Um, <laughs> but I'm here with uh, some great folks in the industry and we're just excited to talk and help Anybody who's looking to get into the industry, whether it's in production, directing, writing, producing music, um, we want to just give whatever tips that we can to help you to get to whatever that next level is for you. Um, also, the purpose of this event, uh, I mean, this session is to help folks understand what jobs are out there. You know, we'll talk about a little later, just all of the open spaces that are available um, in TV and film. Um, so many of us don't realize that there's so much more to, you know, there's producer and there's writer, but then there's art departments and then there's all of these things, script supervisors and so many different areas. So we'll talk about that a little bit later, um, but mostly this is for you. So wherever you're joining from, um, I don't know where there's taking questions, but please feel free to chime in with questions. We're going to try our best to address them, but we want to just get right to it. So first I want to get everybody to introduce themselves. Um, just kind of share your who you are, where you're from, um, what you do in the industry, and kind of maybe where you got your start. I'll start with uh, Nikki. Hey, so uh, born and raised in Baltimore. Um, I come from a, a musical family, so I think I was always, you know, uh, in the arts, adjacent to the arts. Um, I went to a series of art schools that kind of opened the door to film. I wanted to be an actress first, you know, mainly because I wanted to be in film. And, you know, I was like, oh, I didn't realize you could be a director. One thing led to another, got into different programs and started doing that. I really had success um, in, well, out of film school, I really had success in the advertisement space that really opened up a lot of things for me. So that's where my bread and butter came from. And now I'm directing television, um, writing for shows, specking, all the things, so. Nice. Thank you, Nikki. And I want you to explain what specking is later, please. Put, make that note in your mind, <laughs> just in case people don't know. It's a space. It's a space people don't know about. Uh, Felicia, can you introduce yourself? Sure. Um, thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Um, I'm a county girl. I was raised in Randallstown. I went to Milford. Then I went to Towson. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. <laughs> business sounded good. So I went into business and working in marketing. But then I started writing as an outlet. So I started my career as a freelance journalist. I was writing for places like eventually like the Baltimore City Paper. Um, and I was writing about music. Then I went on to write books. So I wrote a book about music um, and then books became hard <laughs> for me. And I wanted a form that just felt different. So I started to self-teach myself screenwriting. Um, I would like read scripts and um, just try to teach myself. So then eventually I moved to LA about seven years ago with one screenplay. That screenplay became Really Love on Netflix. Um, and I got really serious about writing for film and TV. And then I was eventually staffed on Queen Sugar. I was most recently on Grey's Anatomy. And I started directing um, without it, you know, as part of that. And I recently shot a short film in Baltimore, actually. So I can talk about that process. Um, and yeah, so that's me. Sweet. All right, we're going to go to Harmony. Can you introduce yourself, brother? Yeah, my name is Harmony Samuels. Uh, I'm a music producer. Uh, born and raised in London, UK, uh, moved to Los Angeles in 2008, um, discovered by Rodney Darkchild Jerkins, um, who gave me my first opportunity uh, to move to America and start my career in music. Um, Chris Brown, Fame, Fortune album, broke Ariana Grande into the music industry by executive producing her first album. Worked on movies like Thing Like a Man, Thing Like a Man 2, uh, theme song for Hotel Transylvania 2, um, The Best Man Holiday, um, and so much more. Um, placing records, worked on the Empire TV show that was on Fox for about two years. We did a lot of songs, maybe like 150 songs on that. Um, but yeah, been in the music business for a minute now, uh, entrepreneur and label owner. Uh, with a JV at Universal. Dope. Happy to have you. Uh, All right, Kuma, 
Introduce yourself. Yo, <clears throat> what's up? Kuma from uh, Washington, D.C., where I basically started out as a PA there. Um, currently the uh, manager at Apple Music for Global Creative Services and Productions. So we basically oversee all of the creative content and live events and events at for Apple Music. Um, I started as a PA in D.C. and uh, worked my way up to the coordinator, worked at BET. Alex and I worked almost a dozen, more than a dozen <laughs> shows together. Oh, yeah. um, and then 2012, moved to L.A. and started working the awards so show circuit. So we have been on, I coordinated and managed shows like the Oscars, Grammys, BET Awards. Um, but now in 2020, I joined Apple, the Apple Music team. And ever since then, we've been producing all the live events here. Um, so that's, that's how I started. And yeah. where I am now. Dope. Thank you, Kuma. Bam. All right, Charlene, last but not least. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. My name is Sherlyn Caesar. I'm a Jersey girl, grew up in Newark. I thought I was too, I too was going to be in front of the camera and um, decided that behind was where I should live. And um, went to <laughs> went to, to film school and I kind of got my first start or nudge. Um, the Emmys has a foundation for students, much like the Oscars do. And I won a student Emmy along with the student internship from the Emmys where I worked at Mad Men. So started off as an intern to office PA, office PA to assistant, assistant to now producing. Um, worked on the scripted television track for a really long time and simultaneously was working on an independent documentary that um, thankfully, luckily won, I won my first Emmy um, last summer, 2021, um, from that PBS documentary um, called Hollywood's Architect. And I am, yeah, off freelancing, doing other producing things. Sweet. Mm -hmm. All right, dope. Um, so, hey, we got some Jersey love in there. All right, great. Y'all resumes take a long time. So I'm glad. <laughs> Thank you for the truncated versions because y'all are some experienced folks. So look, we're going to get into it. Um, I just kind of want to talk about really quickly the state of the industry um, and specifically like how we, we started talking about how everybody got started. I want to start there because I feel like one of the greatest myths, and and I want to ask the question is, you know, what myths do you think keep creatives from really like getting to the starting line in the industry? Um, because I think one of those um, one of those big myths that I think about is that you have to be in LA to be in the industry, right? So can we just start there? Like, what do y'all think? And you, we can all kind of chime in. But what do you think is some of the myths that keep us from really getting to the starting gate of the industry where we're trying to go. I'll, I'll just throw in a thought. Um, I think there is a time where that was a standard, you know, um, and in some ways it is, but before the pandemic, things were hybridizing because people were creating in silos, people were trying to diversify, people were trying to find different ways to expand this market that doesn't require people being anchored to a studio, you know, system. So I, I think that there is value to being in LA, especially in the music space, <laughs> you know, that there is a value to being in Los Angeles, especially if you're a writer, there's a lot of things of value to that. But I think even more so now, um, there's more of a hybrid. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot of my mentors and people who are doing it, they, you know, they up and left, you know, mm -hmm. and they're staying where they are, whether it be overseas or in the South, or in Canada, um, and I think there's there's more there's more of a argument to say that you can do this from other places. But mm -hmm. I still I still believe that there there is a core intrinsic networking industry of value to have a foot in Los Angeles. So. Yeah, I think for, for um, me it was. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I know for me it was my, my the advice I received was to come to LA if I wanted to move up quicker and. You know, make more money, which because in DC, there's not that many live events that could take you on across the, the entire year unless you move to LA. And even New York doesn't have as many as uh, LA does. So that I think it depends on what you're what you what you're looking to do. Every mm -hmm. every type of part of the industry is different. You can do music in Atlanta or LA, New York, or really anywhere. But but it, specifically to what Alex and I do, a lot of it is here in LA. So it was it was easier for me to come here and stay in D.C. or even go to New York. And to that point, I'm going to add really quick, you know, which Nikki kind of mentioned the the game has changed. Like I've been we've been in L.A. for over 10 years. Netflix wasn't around. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? The, a lot of the streaming platforms, the content has gone to a different level. So the demand for content is way higher than it was before. And there is a shortage. There's a shortage of people actually being able, you know, that, that everybody's just not in LA. You know what I mean? We can't staff enough people. Uh, we can't get enough staff um, here. There are a lot of people in LA, but I don't know. You're right, Kuma. I think we were told that and it did work at that time. But I mean, you know, I think one thing that was a principle for me as a PA is that I, did, I didn't move for a long time. I just made moves. So if you had a show, I could come to that city. I work for that show. I find a way to be there. I find a way to be here. So I think that's also a part of it. But Harmony, what were you going to say too? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, just to extend on what you're saying, I think when I moved there in 2008 and nine, yes, it was a New York and LA were the two places you needed to be. Uh, fast forward being in, I've been, I've been living in LA 12 years. I'm starting to see like, you don't have to be in LA to actually make it in the business and actually do well in the business. In fact, it probably is better to start thinking about other territories, one, financially, you know, things cost too much in LA. Um, you know, just gas alone will let you know how much LA <laughs> is up from a, from Atlanta, mm. you know. So cost in itself is, is hard. You know, social media has changed it now. You know, we don't need to go to auditions now as we used to do. Um, even with music, like we're creating music on Zooms now. You know what I mean? Like we're not necessarily have to be. I can work with a, an artist in Africa on a Zoom call, you know, or, you know, technology is moving the needle so fast that I think that, you know, the, the new young kids and the, the up and coming people looking to get in the industry don't, don't have to move to LA anymore, but they do have to move to places that have some kind of industry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Atlanta has an industry. I know Houston, uh, what well, parts of Texas have industries. I know parts of the parts of the East Coast have. So taking advantage of that, but I do feel like things are changing, things are moving. Technology is uh, making things easier to shoot. You know, to make music. Like I can score, shoot, and everything with a backpack. You know, what I mean, like I could do everything from a bag. So that makes it more effective. That means I could work in different places and I think it gives everybody opportunity. And the, the last part, we can all upload at the, on a platform. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I, there's this experiment I'm doing with these, my interns where I'm trying to make them learn to do things at a cost without having to, you know, spend so much money and push themselves to the best of their ability to get those ideas out. Mm -hmm. So that when they do get the opportunities, they know how to manage money, know how to manage budgets and know how to, you know, get the best out of something without having to spend double the price on it. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and teaching those methods enables them to, you know, be able to go, no, I could do this without having to do that, you know, spend that, that amount, amount of money, which enables businesses to want to take more risk because you're able to do greater things with smaller amounts. That's just my opinion. That's huge. I, I, I think on those lines too, in terms of myths, is like there are no rules. There are ways of doing things that the business has. And you'll find that those ways often don't make sense. But if you think about some of our favorite creators, they tend to break the rules. But I think if you're going to break the rules, you have to have an alternative, right? So if you're not going to move to LA or another industry, you might be making something that's noisy or you might be, you know, creating a, 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 a consistent content on TikTok or whatever it is that you're doing. You have to find an alternative if you're not going to go the way of doing things. But I also find that that makes us um, give us more leverage because we're either building community, we're building audience, we're building brand, we're building um, ownership. Um, so finding ways to build leverage. And also, if you do want to move to the L.A. or New York, being ready before you get there. I think a lot of times we just up and move like I moved with one script. That was a mistake. I should have had seven scripts. You know what I mean? Like if you are someplace now and you want to move someplace, you could be getting ready um, before moving. Mm. Yeah, I just, I just want to add, I'm I mean, I'm biasly East Coast. I after film school, I was already working in New York City. Like I 
like LA was not on my vision board by any means, but that's where opportunity took me. I did end up living in LA for a few years, but then I got a job in New York and moved back and have been back since. Um, and New York, you know, to your point, um, Alex, like New York looks way different than it did when I was done with school. There's so much work here and a lot of work for, um, you know, that, so that also means a lot of work for behind the camera folks. So you can be a grip and a gaffer and this and that and all of these other things is for all of the shows and the content that's going here. And to um, kind of piggyback off, off of you um, too as well, Felicia, of just like the other myth I wanted to like lean into is that there's no um, direct or like listed path to your success or like to your goal as a black woman in the industry in an industry that wasn't made for me, my existing in it is already breaking a mold. So mm -hmm. I have encountered a lot of people that will tell me and you know, others like, this is the way you're supposed to do it. It's first this, then that, then this. It's like, well, my setup here, my existence here is already different. So my path is going to be different. So you really got to like lean into yourself and trust yourself and your ability. Like you have to know know your work is good, <laughs> like for sure. But, you know, when you are ready that you can make that jump from, you know, intern to PA, PA to this, this to that, and like keep going because people around you and usually for their own benefit will kind of keep you where you, you know what I mean? Where it's convenient for them. So that mm -hmm. is probably another myth that I would like to like get that, get that done with if we can. <laughs> yeah, if we can. No, that's good. I'm going to and I'm going to do my best as we talk through to try to synthesize and, um, you know, because I've been gathering what you guys are saying. So if you're watching, I'm going to try my best to give you some like tips for you to be writing down that that gathers what everybody's saying. But I also just want to add here, which is kind of a piggyback on what um, Felicia was saying, but be strategic. You know, there is no magic wand. So, you know, specifically, I know when I was in Baltimore, I literally worked as a stagehand. I was pulling cables overnight for live shows. And I was, and then I worked for like a news, a news company, like a news station doing like master control. And then I started doing some other, um, I think I started working as a PA, like with Kuma doing projects, but really what that, those actions were, were a part of me finding the industry where I was. I was looking for things that were the closest to television and I got there because I knew I could talk TV all I want to my sister that works at the cafe, but she don't really know. <laughs> and that's not that she don't want to know, but she not, she's not that that's not going to help. What I got to do is find where is the industry? Because the industry is where you are. Trust me. There's an industry where you are, wherever you are, the industry is there find it and get yourself connected in whatever way possible. If that means you're getting coffee, if that means you're pulling cable, if that means, you know, you're picking something up, get proximity because proximity to the industry is what helps to create that pipeline and to get you in the current that's moving towards where the big industry is. Um, so an overview of what I heard from everybody so far is, like I said, find the industry where you are, use technology to connect across locations. We are in a different space, but what that also means to me, listening to Harmony, listening to Nikki, is like, be with the time. You know what I mean? Stop looking for an old way to get in and everything change. You know, you still looking for your big break in the in the big office and we all on TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Like get over here, because this, this is where the agent's at and they're looking for your numbers. Learn the industry standards. Figure out what the industry standards are for you. Harmony, I love that you talked about your interns, getting them to connect work with budgets because it's we all know, all of us who are creatives know that it's not about how great your idea is. It's, is it executable, right? Is executable in the money that you've given. That matters more than anything um, or as much as the creative itself. Um, break the rules, but have an alternative. Thank you, Felicia, for that. You know, if you're going to break the rules, be strategic, have an alternative, know where you're going, know what you're doing and have a, you know, know what, know what this alternative direction is that you're going to go in, um, find ways to build leverage and be ready. If you're going to shift, if you're going to shift gears, if you're going to go to another place, be ready when you arrive, figure out what readiness looks like, uh, when you get there. So that's, that's really good. Y'all. Um, I do want to get into, um, some of these questions that came before we started the session. Uh, Let's see here. There's one. 
I let's see. How do you? How do you? I, I'm looking to see here because a lot of these can be put together. How do you find auditions? Oh, how can a person with management experience use their experience to get into the creative world? Does anybody have a thought on that? Kuma, I think about you when I think about that. Like, because you used to do film and managing. You did all kinds of stuff. Uh, I mean, I made a lot of friends. That's the one thing I traveled. You know, I, I got experience in a lot of these different cities and met a lot, a lot of different people. And, you know, I mean, one thing I did when when Alex and I were runners and PAs is a lot of runners didn't want to pick up people from the airport or you know, do shuttle runs. But that's when you met everybody. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you met every single person. Every producer had to be picked up from the airport. So it was just getting connected with the the people you were picking up and along the way and asking them what they do. And eventually all these people were able to help me out, out along uh, the way of my career, especially, I mean, Alex knows Alan Rebeck, one of the biggest business managers in the industry. He has helped me from day one. So it's people, people don't always know who to talk to, but people like the accountant or who do every single show will be somebody who can help you out because they're always connected. So it's always just trying to meet the right people and knowing who to talk to when you're on a production. Cause it's not always the producer who's go you're going to be able to talk to. Sometimes it's their assistant, you know, everyone wants to talk to the producer, but the producers nine times out of 10 are way too busy to talk to you. Make yeah. friends with the, make friends with the assistant, the coordinators, those are the people who are actually hiring and, and, and the managers who are actually hiring on all these projects and, the accountants or people you're dealing with every day and they're always connected because they know the producer. So they're the ones who at the end of the day are going to refer you to other people, you know, that they, they can vouch for you. So that, that's how I did it. And that kind of Alex and I kind of came up the same way, uh, meeting those type of people in the industry that could move us forward and give us yeah. advice and help yeah. us along the way. For sure. I also think if you um, are able to kind of trans think about your transferable skills and adjust your resume to look for jobs that are maybe, I love your word proximity, um, close to creative fields, but they really take advantage of your management so you can get closer to the creative. I think sometimes you have to kind of take a few steps before you jump into creative as someone who's made that transition that you may have to find out how, how do your skills translate into maybe the business side of the creative where you can learn a lot that'll aid you in the creative um, and then make the transition. The other way is I always think about making stuff. I think making stuff is often. So can you show that you can manage? Can you show that you can pull together the pieces of a production from a creative standpoint um, is also a great way to show that you, you're ready to be in creative spaces. Yeah. I also, I also want to uh, add to that, you know, which is what, what Kuma was saying, network across is like the biggest principle that I could say. It, I can't say it too much because it's, it's literally, like you said, it's not the people above you, it's the people across from you that if you talk, you're talking to them, that's who's going to like give you the next opportunities. And I think also understanding event, like if you're if if you have if you have a question about like hey do I have skills like like Felicia said that are transferable that just uh, find out if you need help finding out if they're transferable like find somebody now you got LinkedIn now you got all these kind of places like DM somebody you know what I mean just ask at, you know somebody can help you figure out like what skills you might need to um to go in that direction i could tell you on the production side most of it is just needing people with a good attitude that are organized <laughs> that's it so if you uh if you're able to do that you could do production and that's not to say that there's not more for you to learn but a lot of it has to do with that um it's not, you know it's not about being an executive it's just being able to come in because it all the stuff that you see whether it's a big film or a big tv show there's all these nuts and bolts. Every ounce of movement that you see took a person. It took a, it took a department head. So get to know what the departments are and what all the different areas are. Um, even behind the scenes, music-wise as well. It's never just like Harmony, who is a producer. It's not just him. It's engineers. It's all kinds of people that are. It's his. It's his assistants. It's all kinds of folks that are that have a role. Mixers, you know, that have a role in putting things together. So figure out what are the What's the, uh, oh, hey, Nikki, welcome back. Um, what are the parts, uh, like what area am I trying to go into? And what are the, what are the, 
positions under that, you know? Um, so yeah. Uh, one of the other questions I wanted to ask, oh, and Kuma, uh, I think Kuma, you need to go. I, I, I can stay on for a little bit more. For a little bit, okay. Yeah. Um, I did, I, we have a question on here about scoring. Uh, Harmony, I'm gonna ask you this. How do you get opportunities for scoring films or TV series? Wow. That's an interesting one because there's so many different avenues avenues to it, but it's not like the music industry. Um, Got to work with a lot of sync companies. Um, they, you know, a lot of independent sync companies do very well with sync placements um, when it comes to like your catalog. Um, you know, if you're unpublished, it's actually quite better to sync stuff because when I was published by Sony it got harder to sync stuff because, you know, the smaller companies don't have as big a budgets on the sync fees. And then sometimes when it would go to Sony, Sony is going to double or triple the fee up. So they would always look for independent um, producers and writers for syncs. So um, one of the first things I always tell people when it comes to the music part of, of film and TV is build a catalog, build a uh, a huge catalog and, and and make it divert like make it diverse because the more diverse your music is the more opportunities you have because there's not you don't want to be stuck to doing one thing like i said i worked on hotel transylvania i also worked on thing like a man but i also worked on you know other tv shows and what was you know the skill set on each one is very different do you know what i mean so make sure you have a diverse catalog um you know, you can, depending on what city you are in, can find independent sync companies in which you would upload your music to them and they would pitch you to other um, film and TV placements. You'd be surprised, like, some of the biggest movies are looking for really small, like, looking for independent um, songs to kind of, like, sync up because they don't want to spend that much money, even though it's a big Warner movie, you know, uh, a company they they also don't want to spend fifty thousand red dollars on every song that they have. So, you know those small pieces and commercials and they, they all make a difference and they pay. You know I have friends who aren't necessarily in the Billboard Hot One Hundred charts like myself, who make a good living, sometimes better than me, from just syncing music because it's consistent. It's uh, it's it's fast. You know when I was doing Empire, the TV show. I remember Fox would give us $20,000 every time they took a song. And it was just like, and we could get five songs in one month. I couldn't get that many records placed in a month, <laughs> you know, outside. So there is benefits to syncing and, and scoring. Scoring's a little different. I will say scoring is a relationship business. Scoring is not one of those ones where you just become a scorer. Um, you have to have a good reel that shows your work, which means you have to be able to show music correlating with 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 picture. Um, so you have to have a very good reel, and you really have to start interning in places that would allow those type of relationships to take place. Um, scoring is a relationship based industry. I don't care what anybody says to me. Most of my friends in scoring, even me, as long as much as I scored. I haven't scored nearly half the movies I would have loved to score because it's a relationship-based situation. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, Salam Remy is one of my mentors and probably one of the biggest producers in the country. Um, at his highest point, because he wanted to be a scorer, actually got himself an internship at Sony Films. And this was him at his highest point. I mean, he had done Amy Winehouse and everybody else and still went and got an internship at Sony Films to get into scoring. So just so you know how intense and how uh, high of a, of a status quo it is. Um, another thing is finding directors and finding, you know, up and coming directors, up and coming producers who are in film and TV. Like Alex just did something for me the other day. She was like, hey bro, there's this thing I'm working on. Can you, can you score it? That's a relationship, do you know what I mean? She knows my work, I know her, and we can build together. That's that's probably the best way, is finding people who are at the level of, uh, you know, they're also up and coming in different fields, like producing and directing writers too, you know, film writers, and, and building with them. That's another way to kind of get your scoring going. That's dope, thank you. 
Oh, we and have a question. Oh, go ahead. We need more black scores and composers <laughs> and black music supervisors like across the board. Like I think music supervision in particular is very white um, on the TV side. Like, so for those who are interested, I, I, we need more. Big time, big time <laughs> and versatility. Um, we have a screen uh, writer question here. As a writer, I'm almost done with my screenplay first season. What will be a best option to get my screenplay out there? Um, yeah, Felicia, Nikki. Um, uh, so you say first season, like a pilot? Well, I, I'll, I'll just talk to just in generally speaking. Um, one, I, I think there's a difference between wanting to get your, I think there's, things that I recommend. One, I think you want to ask the question, like, do I want to get this project made or do I want to be a career screenwriter? If you want to be a career screenwriter, I say write a, write another script and then another script after that, uh, because you want to be ready for a couple of things. One, just making sure that your craft is tight. Um, two, that you have additional projects because people may read that screenplay and say, oh yeah, it's good, but it's not for me. What else do you have? So you want to be ready. I think a lot of times, I just also speak from experience that I was going into really love, just like really trying to get it made versus actually building my writing career. So I just encourage people who want to be career screenwriters to just start to build a portfolio before thinking about how they're going to get their project out there. But then once you have a portfolio, um, I recommend submitting it to contests. So there's a number of really valuable um, contests, everything from the Austin Film Festival to the Film Independent Screenwriting Lab, the Sundance and, and the uh, Sundance Episodic Lab. There's like a ton of contests as well as fellowships to submit your work for because they help to validate your work. Um, they help to get kind of get you in the mix. Um, I also would encourage you to try to form a writer's group or join a writer's group so that you can be working on your craft together and you guys can be submitting work and reading it um, together. Um, and then I also would just suggest trying to get it in front of people who are in the industry, but you have to make sure it's ready for prime time. So I personally don't read feed work anymore for feedback because I'd rather want to I'd rather try to get you a job than give you notes on your script. I'd rather have you get peers and other people to give you notes on your script and get it ready for prime time. And then when I read it, I'm like thinking about you for opportunities in writer's rooms, et cetera. Uh, but I encourage you to try to find peers who are in the industry or have proximity to the industry to start reading your work, um, who may be able to then sort of pass it on and whatnot. Yeah, that's great. Um, just to recap really quick, what was said so far is, uh, from harmony on the music side, building a diverse catalog, to be honest, that, that seems like on both sides, writing, music, build a diverse catalog, ultimately that people need to see a range of your work. It's kind of like somebody coming up to you and they like, Hey, let's be best friends. And you're like, let's hang out a little more. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just like, we don't, I don't know you yet. Right. So creatively, if you don't, if you don't have something that can, if you're meeting someone for the first time, you're giving them one piece of your work that, it, it, that it's hard for them to get to understand your voice um, in that one piece of work. And that goes for music, that goes for writing, even on the production side, Kuma and I both have come up in the production side. I'm now a producer um, on, you know, more creative on like the docu series uh, kind of side of things. But like even when my my resume now it looks even if you don't know me, you're like, oh, she worked on the NAACP Image Awards. Oh, okay, she worked on the Hip Hop Awards. Oh, but she also was a producer on Rhythm and Flow, and then also on this Ava DuVernay documentary. What does this all mean? You start to put together a story of the person, and it helps you to move forward. You're not going to get out the gate necessarily having all of this experience. But like when you're a writer and a musician, you have the ability to create like for people like us in production, you're kind of limited to whatever you can work on. Right. Whatever you could put together. But as a as a writer and as a musician, you're actually limitless. You can just create. <laughs> you can actually just focus and create your catalog and like come in the game. So it's it's really a big benefit that you have. Um, oh, we we got one question here. What are the best ways to find? I actually want to amend this question. That it says, what are the best ways to find a writing mentor? But I want to put, what are the best ways to find a mentor? 
period, um, a creative mentor. So I, I want to open that to everybody. Internships. Internship. I mentor so many young men and women due to internship programs, um, finding places to intern and grow. Um, I got this one kid who is like, He's like, man, I just want to be here. I was like, no. I was like, I said, we ain't got no. It's like, bro, I, he came every day to my studio, every day. And we was like, all right, come on. And turns out he's a genius. Turns out the kid is actually a genius. And six months of intern, that boy cleaned the floors, swept the stairs. And every opportunity, he stood in the corner. And he didn't even, like, interfere, like, ask questions. He just watched very uh, intensely. And, but then what became, he was so useful in the place, like making sure everything, I mean, I don't think we missed waters in the fridge for six months cause he was so on top of it. Um, and then, um, and then one day I, I it just, he would, he impressed me so much by his work ethic of just being there. Mind you, he hasn't even told me his skill set. He's just being there and just like cleaning the floor. I walked in, he's in before me. He's cleaning the floor. He's cleaning the bathrooms. He's, and I'm like, sir, who are you? And where, what, what, are you, what are you about? Because <laughs> this is kind of creeping me out. <laughs> and it turns out the kid's a, is, a, is a musical genius. And, um, you know, now we're mentoring him on how to really like, you know, become, be in the music business. And I, I see a future for him. And so, but that I would have never paid attention to him if he never. He, he just kept coming. He just kept coming and respectful and just be, became useful without allowing his desires to, you know what I mean? His wants, he quenched them. He, he held them down for me and it was like, if I could just get his attention and I'm going to make sure. So he became, he's like, I, I just wanted to prove to you that I'm, I'm willing to work hard for what I want to go for. And yeah. he got my attention. And when he got my attention, I said, you know what? I'm a mentor you. Not only am I help you, I'm a mentor you, because I feel like, and I want you to do the same for the next kid that comes to the door, and 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 that's how it is. So you know, I feel like you know internships and willing to work in places to gain experience is the best way to get mentors. Because if you don't do that right, you, you know, sometimes we want to just go up to someone who you know, these guys are experienced business people who have a million one things happening in and out of their lives, they have families. Why should they give up the time for you? Like, why should they? Why should, you know, Roddy Jenkins give up the time for me? He saw what I was, you know, willing to do for my own career. And he was like, I'm willing to take that risk on you. Same with this kid. So for anybody who wants to pick up a mentor, you got to prove to that person, whoever you want to mentor, you know, whoever you want to be mentored by, which is probably the next thing I should say, know who you want to be mentored by. Don't just go pick someone because someone's in a position. You know what I mean? Do research, read up on them, search how many times they've mentored people, search how many times, what, what they've done in their lives that, you know, intrigue you to want to be like them and sit with them and hear from them. So make sure you know who you want to mentor you and then go show them why they need to mentor you. Prove it. You know what I mean? And, 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 and I think you will get mentored by that person. Yeah. Kuma, I want you to weigh in on this because you're somebody over the years that I have watched. Like, you're, I mean, maybe unofficial mentors, I don't know, but I've, I've watched you, like, get some of the biggest people to get under their wing. You, can you speak to this a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it's just, like you said, just, I, for me, it was like coming up with a, with a plan of what I wanted to do to do like before I moved to LA I said I I realized what shows I wanted to work for what companies I wanted to, wanted to work for and then I also realized that I need to be patient because a lot of times you email people they don't respond to you you get discouraged but I, like like Harmony said people are busy and um once I came up with a plan and I explained to people what I wanted to do people are willing to help you out so like for example Oscars I wanted to work the Oscars and, and I emailed the producer and I was like, she didn't reply to me for like four months, but she did. And she gave me a job as a PA. And then I was like, in my mind, I was like, I want to be a coordinator on the show. Um, I, pay, I was PA for a few years and then I, I got cool with everybody on set. And then when it was time, one day I got an email, the subject line said Oscars. And then the email said, are you in? 
and that's how I got the job on the Austria. So it's, I think it's a lot coming up with the plan of what you wanted to do, what you want to do, and um, writing it down. I'm a big believer in writing things down and visualizing it in your head and and, uh, and explaining to people what, what you do. People are not going to know what you want to do if you don't tell them. Um, that was a big thing I was told when I was coming up. And then having mentors like Troy, who Alex knows, and Alan Reback, who, who advocated for me. But it's like really a lot of it is being patient and um, – because so people are busy, really. People are busy, and, and there's like a million other people hitting it up. And like Harmony said, why why will they take the time just to help you out? And you just got to prove it, work hard. And and I was a person who want, who showed up in every city. Like I would fly out. Like either my friends gave me a ticket, New York, LA, and I wanted to learn how production worked in every one one of those cities there because they're all very different. Different working in New York and working in LA are two different things, and even working in Atlanta, and DC. So. Once I moved out to LA, and I had experience, but I already had experience in all these cities. These companies were willing to fly me out to do work in, in New York. I moved to LA, and I, I, all my shows were in New York. Mm-hmm. So that's crazy. That was, Ain't that the irony? Really? <laughs> yeah. So I was, I was, I was, I was, I wanted to move to LA so much. Like I landed here, and, and for three months straight, I was working sh- on shows in New York. So, and but being paid to be out there. That's that's the difference. It's being mm. them paying me to be be out there so it's like be patient have a plan is the biggest thing for me was uh with getting a mentor and and um you know it'll, it'll, at the end of the day i'll work out come up with a plan pr- i mean pray about it for me it's praying about it and um too so but yeah no that. thanks for that nikki or felicia i know that the original question was specifically about writing or Sherlyn too it was about like how to find a writing mentor and Sherlyn, i know you you know how to work your way up too <laughs> I have seen it happen. So any of y'all want to weigh in too on, on finding a mentor or, you know, just getting that, that guidance you're looking for. Um, it, for me, it was more so there, there's a lot of importance of being in the space, like being around the folks that you uh, want to be mentored by. Um, that's how it happened for me. You know, shadowing under people, working under people, that's how the mentorships uh, came along. Um, but those those opportunities to apprentice with somebody didn't come about until I met, interned. So, you know, going back to the intern thing, like that opened up a lot of doors because I didn't have any, I didn't have an in. <laughs> I didn't know anybody, like I knew people who knew people, but and they, they weren't looking at me. Um, so, you know, Yes, writing it out, being patient, being prayerful, being strategic, all, all those things eventually led to that one person's like, hey, I see you around, you know, and, you know, I know you have a voice. Let's work on it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, um, I want to. So my path to finding a mentor is a little like tricky because I can't think of one person in particular. So I want to speak to the person that's like, I don't know who it is. I don't know where to find. I don't know. One, I want to suggest there, you can lean into like an invisible mentor, right? In Mm -hmm. particular, if, you know, you look up to a particular, you know, a certain writer, let's say, like study all of their stuff, find them on podcast, see if they've done a round table, watch them on YouTube, stalk them. Like you'd be surprised by how just listening to them explain you know, how they broke down the first act of their script and et cetera, et cetera, on this podcast is helping you, even though this is not, you know, like a one-on-one sit down, right? So if you're having a hard time finding, you know, one specific voice that you can like talk to over lunch, like lean into the invisible thing, like find the voice that speaks to you and dig into that person. And as we're all saying, like, there's so much People are talking so much in so many different spaces from podcast to YouTube to this, to that, to that. So you can find, you know, like what you need um, and to lean into what was said before by, you know, everyone else here. Just do not be discouraged when people do not hit you back because that is real life. Um, and but I think what's important is that if you can build a relationship and a connection with that person, when you need them, they will give you the advice or respond to what you need. So I have been in a situation where it's like, okay, I didn't, I haven't heard from them or talked to them or whatever, but I'm between two jobs or I don't know which way to go. And if I pick up the phone and text or whatever, they're there, they're just busy, we're busy, you know, just still lean into the past that you have, but 
make those relationships stronger so that when you are in need or when you need that support or recommendation or whatever that person is there, because you might not be in the position like, you know, Harmony's mentee to come every day and sweep the floor and stock the fridge. So you got to get creative on like what that looks like if that's, if you don't have that opportunity. So, you know, I want to share that so you can like also creatively think on how to find a creative mentor. I love that because I have mentors in my head. These are people who I may have never met, but I do deep dives on certain people who I admire their 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 creative, their craft, their creative, their business acumen. So I think that's so great. I know also, you know, in lieu of formal internships, I would volunteer. So I remember when I was still living in DC, um, Ava DuVernay, I had met her randomly at a music festival. Um, when I was selling copies of my book, I we kept in touch. I was like, whatever you need. And when she needed help, like spreading the word about her movie, her first movie in DC, I was helping to do that. Like volunteering and uh, finding ways to volunteer has always been, even when I came out here, I was volunteering, helping to organize panels for the WGA, or I was volunteering at film festivals. Ways to volunteer to then meet people um, is really helpful. I'll also say though, you try not to romanticize people in your head because a lot of these people in the industry are <laughs> so like the people you like, I want them to mentor me probably are fucked up. Oh, are bad are not great people. So I would just say like, also don't like, there's a, sometimes we have a desperation about ourselves thinking that people are better or all these things. But I just would, would say like to just remind ourselves about our own value and also what we bring to the table and, um, always still continuing to focus on um, our work and our craft because people want to get on a moving train no matter who they are. So the way that we can kind of focus on getting our trains moving and not romanticizing people so much, but also realizing that we need community, we need support. Um, it's just a fine balance. Yeah. Can I, can I just add one more thing on yeah. to that end, which is sometimes when you look for a mentor, you look for like the top, you look for the CEO, but there is someone, someone between you and the CEO that can look back and tell you what's happening <laughs> and is still in the room to see where you want to be. So sometimes you get so caught on how do I get to that person that you miss all of the people in between. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. There's a question about internships that just came up live that said, where's a good place to learn about internship opportunities or behind the scenes opportunities to get you closer to the job you want to do? Um yeah, I, I don't know if you guys want to want to weigh in. I think, I think, inst- like there's so many resources out here now. You know, there's like Instagram. You can kind of see what everybody's doing in a lot of ways and find your way there. Um, I know. Even speaking of Ava, um, she has Array, Array, which is you know a a huge platform for um, you know people. Uh, especially like people of color behind the scenes, but can you guys speak to where, like, where, where can you go, whether it's music, whatever, like, what, what's the low hanging fruit? I think you can also hit up people who you want to work with and, you know, offer to intern. You know, sometimes they may not have a formal internship program in place, but if there are certain people who you want to work with, you, they may actually need help and just haven't had the time to actually put together an internship, um, you know, ad and program and all of that. So that's one way that I found that I'll just reach out to people in the past to say, hey, do you need help with this? I also to this day barter with folks like, hey, I need help with this. I can give you help on that. Um, so I think there's ways to, even if they're not published in, you know, Indeed.com or LinkedIn or Instagram or places like that, you might be able to hit up folks directly and offer to intern. Yeah. Also emailing, just cold, like a lot of times it's just cold emailing these companies. Is, uh, whether you're an intern or a producer, I have a producer friend that's like, they asked me about certain companies, like just email the email on the website and that has got people jobs or got them in the door. And in ways like that as well. So just a lot of times it's just cold emailing people or looking around you. Your friends may have a connection at a company or like a lot of Alex and I have bounced projects off each other, you know, whether it's in, uh, internships for other people or where she's looking for somebody, I'm looking for somebody. Um, mm-hmm. But it's just, you know, there's a people who's around you as well. There's a statement my mom used to say, closed mouths don't get fed. If you don't speak up and ask, 
you can ask the most randomest person and you'll be like surprised at what kind of information you'll get. Um, I just feel like if you want something, you'll go find it. It's just as simple as that. I'm, I'm British born and where I came from in London, there was no way I was going to make it to LA. No way. My teachers, all of them was like, you know, you're not going to make it the way you think you are as a teenager. And I just kept asking. And I went from a little small town in London to working with, with some of the best people in the world because like everybody on this call had to take flights, you know, research. And I was researching at a time when I had no information. There was no internet. There was no internet, no Google. <laughs> you know, we just about had cell phones. So, you know, right now we have so much information, you know what I mean? And sometimes you got to get on a plane. Sometimes you're going to get on a bus. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do to get to wherever it is you need to be. But like I said, research and know who exactly who you want to be, where it is. I mean, there's studios everywhere. There's production companies everywhere, big, 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 small and medium sizes. And I just feel, you know, it might be the next town over. It might be the next city over. Whatever you got to do to get you closer. I had interns driving three hours to come work at my studio because they knew the, what the potential was. And the potential wasn't even from me. The potential was being in the environment of the industry and who they could pick up in relationship, you know, and other interns and other business, other people that they were meeting in the, you know, you know, like you said, bro, the, the relationships around the people you like to be or being mentored by or you want to be involved with, those are just, a, those are significant, you know, uh, partnerships have happened. I've watched two, two guys who met each other at my studio as interns, now our production company and, and making records together and doing incredibly well. So those are the type of relationships that come. So, you know, the, the answer is really out there. You just got to go for it. And I, I want to just speak to this really quickly, too, because I think every person on this call and likely some of some people that are that some of you that are logged on to, you know, we've we've literally like put our hands like we, we just put our head. We put our head down. We did the search. We were strategic. We made moves. And sometimes I think depending on where you are, when you hear like, you know, you just got to get out there, you know, it might sound really big and ethereal, but I think the question to ask yourself is like, do I want what I say I want? Because if you want what you say you want, like there was no, there was no Netflix. There was no nothing that told me that it was viable for me to pursue being a producer while I was living in Baltimore. There was nothing that told me that in 2008. It just wasn't anything that told me that. But I know I went to Howard and then I knew I was a secretary at a production company. I was a secretary. They were making ESPN shows. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, hey, y'all got any contacts? And I literally just came in. I would come to the office, have coffee in the coffee shop downstairs. And I started cold calling people at 7 a.m. in the morning because I just got a bunch of numbers from like people who had been on the client list. And I was the secretary. And come to find out, I didn't know I was calling all these executive producers. I was just calling them. I was just like, hey, my name is Alex. Just wondering if you need any support. But from that, I ended up working on Capitol, the, the 4th of July show and at the on the Capitol, um, at the Capitol, the you know, Memorial Day show, but all of those Kennedy Center honors, all those projects came from me just being like, I believed that what I was looking for was out there. If you're looking for like the right, the platform, like I'm looking for this button to press so that I could submit this and then my career will begin. If you're going to be looking for a minute. You know what I'm saying? You got to just know, you have to actually know. Like there, I, I wasn't believing. I knew that it was possible for me to get into the industry. I just had to like talk to the right people. So some of it is just like the art of communication and follow up. You know, and being co confident as well. That's one thing. People can sense sense that uh, confidence, um, especially in the world that uh, world that I work in. It's it's. People, I've heard producers say, "I was like, I don't, I don't think that PA. He, he's not. He didn't, I'm not confident he can do what he can do." But there's another PA who does who has that outward confidence, and that's the person we pick. It's like because they're able to be vocal and voice what they want, and and and. That's being confident in what we what you do is I think also a big part of working in the industry. Yeah. 
Well, look, we are at, it's uh, 12.30 Pacific, 3.30 Eastern now. I have a couple folks that I need to let go. But before you go, I was hoping um, Felicia, Harmony, uh, Kuma, if you have any, like, just anything that's on your mind that we haven't talked about that's just sort of a principle or something to be, like, a final thought for people to be, to or that you live by, that you want to pass on as people, like, are trying to break through to the next level in the industry. Could you just leave us with something? Boy, don't take anything personal. And that's probably the biggest one for me because just someone's rejection today could be could be leading to someone's, you know, uh, a signing or, or, or someone's opportunity. Never be upset. Uh, I remember moving to Los Angeles and I got flown to LA to work with this particular guy. And he basically told me I was trash. Not in so many words, but in so many words. And, you know, I was really offended by it. And, you know, um, and I held him to that, you know. And then about an hour later, Roddy Jenkins came out the woodworks and was like, yo, I think you're a genius. Like, come work with me. And, you know, I had to, I learned something that was like, damn, you can't really like, you just don't know what's coming. You know what I mean? You don't know who's in the next room. And fast forward five years later, I ended up working with that same guy who rejected me. And, you know, and I realized like, if I didn't let go of what, that, that, that offense, I may not have ended up working with him because I would have been mad at him still five years later. Um, and just understand that people are, people are humans, man. And something might just not fit for them. Um, doesn't mean it's anything against you. It doesn't mean it's anything towards you. It just means, you know, there's another door waiting for you to walk through. So, you know, don't lose faith. Stay stay patient, as, as Brother Kuma said. And just don't take anything personal. And just keep working on your craft. Is it better? Is it the best it could be? You know, a lot of times we think things are good, and then we look back five years and be like, oh, it's, it wasn't that good. <laughs> but we would swear by it was good, right? So always improve, always be willing to improve, always, you know, look over your uh, over your work and, and, and improve it until the day the world gets to see it. You know what I mean? Never stop improving. Be yeah. ahead of it. You know what I mean? And that's kind of where I got with you. Dope. Harmony, quick question. Can you just tell me real quick, what job were you working when you were like starting out? What job that wasn't music were you working to like pay the bills while you was doing it? Oh my God, what jobs did I work to keep the lights on? Man. I I mean, I was a hustler, so you know, I was I had side gigs, I was a barber, um I owned okay. little school businesses, I worked at stores, I worked at HM, I worked at every retail store you could think of I'd worked at. Um, See, I just want to, I just want to put it out there. If Alicia, I'm coming to you next because I want you to give you a tip, but also throw that in there what you were working on because I think it's also important for people to understand. Like we weren't just like we believed, and so the checks came. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's not be like that. You know. <laughs> I did a night shift at the at the at like a, at Ralph's. You know what I'm saying? Like the night shift, so no one saw me during the day. So I walked through. The night. <laughs> Stacking boxes, I did it all, I, and I and I and I actually, I'm 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 proud of those 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 jobs because it taught me to be me. It taught me yeah. to appreciate my position today. Yeah, for sure. All right, Felicia. Yeah, I would uh, piggyback off, of, and I and I saw a question about a screenwriting agent, so I'm happy to answer that too. But I would oh, piggyback yeah. off of on um, the craft and the work is like the most important thing, right? Because it's it's the thing that derives the joy and the pleasure. Like, I think sometimes we're so focused on outcomes that we cannot control. The only thing we can control is the work um, and how much we put into it, who we, you know, who, uh, how we get better at it. Like, I just feel like I learned early on not to attach to outcomes, but to really focus on doing my work well, doing my job well, which I've Figure, which I consider like when I'm in a writer's room and then doing my work well when I'm developing and creating my own projects because that's the only thing that I control. Outcomes, like Harmony was saying, 
sometimes it's protection. <laughs> you know, you, you didn't get that job because that writer's room is crazy, or you didn't get that job because that director is nuts, or you didn't get that job because there's something bigger and better waiting for you. So not to attach to outcomes is what I'd say. Um, in terms of screenwriting agent, uh, it can be a good way to go. I always like to encourage people to start with a manager. Good managers can be really, really fantastic because they usually are much more um, involved in the day-to-day -day of your career than an agent is. I tend to liken agents and managers for writers um, with a very crude stereotype of mommy and daddy where manager is mommy and nurturing and listening to you and talking every day or how often you want to talk. And then agent is like enforcer, muscle, negotiation sort of thing. So um, I would always encourage to start with a manager, but you don't need either. <laughs> That's the other, like the rules, like you don't need either, right? But it's all about being strategic about whether or not you find that they bring value to your career because you are the CEO of your business and your career. Do they bring value? Um, and then jobs, uh, I, oof. <laughs> um, I like actually right before I broke in, I was being a virtual executive assistant. I was really bad at it, um, but it was actually for a, a nonprofit that I used to be a client of mine. So I used to run a marketing uh, consultancy for like nonprofits and social justice organizations, and I had big clients. So when I was trying to make the transition, I took you know, I, I needed something that wouldn't be as capacity requiring. So I was like, I, they were like, you know, do you know anybody who'd be good for this executive position? I was like, me, executive <laughs> assistant position, helping the two founders. I was like, me. And I and I was horrible. I was bad at calendaring. They showed me so much grace, but it allowed me to put writing first because it didn't require creative capacity. Mm -hmm. um, and to get focus and to also transition into writer publicly because I had a public sort of persona previous to that of running this agency and this consultancy. So that was a job. But my big hustle was always teaching. I was an adjunct professor at like four colleges. I was at Coppin. I was at Howard Community College. I was at uh, all of them. So that was my wow. hustle for a long time was teaching adjunct freshman comp. Wow. The hustle. Kuma. <laughs> uh, my advice, have a good time while doing the process. Just have, have fun, um, stay positive and, um, you know, be focused is the one thing. Once you once you figure out what you want to do, it gets easier um, along the way. No, and what, what did you say your job, Kuma? Who's you going? Oh no, uh, I think I've been in production most of my career. But uh, while in college, I worked at a, a water park, which pre pretty much helped me out with management skills. Um, so, but yeah, have fun along the way. That's my biggest takeaway. No. Well, Felicia, we got some more questions and some more stuff to hit. So Shirlene and Nikki, if y'all are able to stay, that'd be great. Felicia, Harmony, Kuma, thank you so much. Um, they're going to transition out. Uh, appreciate y'all. Okay. So I want to go back really quick, Nikki. The, a question came up about specking as I, I had a, a thought. Somebody said, can we go back to what specking means? Can you speak on that a little bit? Well, yeah, just roughly that you're you're writing something on the speculation that it's gonna get made, um, and I, I've I, I've I have more like firsthand experience with that in the agency space, you know, and the commercial side of things. Which, a side note, that's not a there's nothing to like poo poo like get, getting into things on the agency side. Um, on the, the the promo side, the advertising side, because that um, there's more dollars there and it's more consistent and it gives you more access to all of these all of these shows and all of these films that we're talking about. And it's you know it's it's very much a um, as an East Coaster is very much an East Coast thing. Um, so you are creating an idea, writing it uh, on the speculation that's going to get made. Um, and I've seen I've seen that take longer, and you know the the more standards you know TV spaces. But if you're going to pitch for uh, making commercials, um, it's fast and furious. And I think a lot of creativity comes out of that. So a lot of people dovetail from that space into the TV film space. So. Now, is specking a like something you 
do as a job? Like, like you no, can't. No, no, no. Well, oh. you're, as if you're coming in as a writer or a producer, because I see that in the unscripted space. If you're coming in as a producer or coming in as a director, um, you know, you're 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 writing something, a treatment or something on the speculation that it's going to get uh, made. A production company will take you under, you know, or you'll approach the production company and I'm like, and you have, hey, I have this idea. They're like, yeah, let's do it. Let's combine forces and pitch to a network. Um, and that's an art form in and of itself, um, but, you know, because you're, you're selling yourself, you know, and I hate, I hate the, the, the air quotes of like, oh, what's your brand? But in those spaces, you know, what, what is your voice? I think is something that is easier to dovetail into than just having a brand or a persona. That's hard. <laughs> you know, like a lot, a lot of writers and creators are introverts by nature. <laughs> you know, you, you have to wear, um, a different mask to be, in these spaces and be confident, you know, that, that's a, that's an acquired skill. So for those who can do that, you know, amen. Um, but I think being able to separate the two is, is healthy for those who are create, you know, the creative space, it's very intimate. Mm -hmm. um, you have to protect that just as much as you put the business side of yourself on so that you can go and march out and make this creative thing happen. And so I, I've learned that, um, that juggle in the agency space when you're specking because you're you're learning how to talk and how to share your ideas and you know get people on board so that they will say oh here's two hundred thousand go make this unscripted blah 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 so yeah that's great um i want to really quick um just to there was a lot that was said and i wanted to just recap really quickly about the mentor thing and some of those takeaways for anybody that's taking notes. Um, the a couple of takeaways from finding a mentor. Big one was it's lean into an invisible mentor. So huge. Thank you, Sherlyn, for that. I'm actually somebody that is like that. I have a few different people. Some people that I actually talk to, some people that I don't talk to, but I have like an image of a mentor in my head. Um, and the relationships, you know, for the people that I do know, I don't know that I've asked them to be my mentor. They just fill a role. They don't need to know. <laughs> they just do. And they fill that space. So that was really great. Um, learn the art of follow-up, communication and follow-up. Y'all, some of us just don't know how to communicate you know? And so we should work on that because <laughs> that's really it. You know, do you know how to send an email and an email that's not asking for a favor all the time? You know what I mean? How can you serve? You know, this is my hat. This is my company, Create and Serve. It's what I live by. But very, very big. And Kuma was talking about it as well. Show up for people. Be proactive about helping. Harmony talked about it as well. People actually give opportunities to those who make their jobs easier. That is the truth. It, they have hired you because they needed help on a supporting level. So they need you to support. The better you support, the more they want to help you. I've seen it happen over every part of my career. And, and I think it's huge. Um, know who you want to be your mentor. There was, some there was a question that I didn't address that came in about like, how do you avoid scams? You avoid scams by researching. Who are these people? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you if you if you ain't heard nothing about, it, if you look them up and you can't find nothing on them, don't show up. Don't be asking them to be your mentor. You know what I mean? And then don't get mad when you the first person they ever mentored and you like, man, how y'all? How you ain't tell? Yes, they did. They told you by having no other examples of their work. So, you know what I mean? We gotta take some ownership out here too as creative. Sometimes we don't want to take ownership, and you have to because it does take some work. We are not. There's a business side and a strategic side to creativity that we don't always lean into, right? We, we, we just want to be the artists. We just want to create and put things out into the world, but you got to be strategic too, or you will get taken advantage of. And, and, and actually, I don't think that narrative is the dominant narrative. I don't think there's mostly people out here trying to take advantage, but I think there are a lot of creatives. Sometimes as creatives, we just want to make our art and we think that we don't have to pay as much attention to the business, to the strategy, um, to the way we move, you know? Um, so that's important. Be in the space. Nikki, you talked about that. Just getting in the space where the people are that you want to be around um, and, and figuring out where, where those folks are. People do take cold emails. And if you look, you will find people's emails. It'll surprise you. You'll just go on somebody's website and be like, oh, Oh, so that's, it's just, just Don Cheeto's email right there. Okay. I mean, it's not going to be Don Cheeto, but you know what I'm saying? Like if people email access to a, to someone or to a company 
it's out there. You know what I mean? Will Smith, they have Westbrook Entertainment. 100%, you go to Westbrook, there's a there's somewhere for you to contact them. There's a way. There's there's all kinds of ways to make contact. Um, and then craft your role. Somebody said that. Was that you? I don't remember who, who said it, but this was really important. I think it might have been you, Nikki. But uh, crafting your, when you reach out to somebody, and you want to support them as an intern or whatever, they may not, or maybe it's Felicia, they may not have the bandwidth to have come up with what they need yet. Come up with a role and give it to them. Hey, I see this. I would like to learn from you. Here's what I would love to do this. Can I help with your social media? Can I do this? Can I do that? Offer the role. I'm telling you nine times out of 10, people are so busy. I tell people all the time that reach out to me, please follow up and please don't be mad if you got to follow up three times. I got two kids, you know what I'm saying? And I'm producing shows, you know, it's a lot going on. So follow up, please. But also craft, know what you want, know who you know who you are going after and craft your role, pitch it to them. Because if you know what you want, so much easier to serve you when you know what you want. Um and so, yeah, so I want to get Nikki and Shalyn, there's a, a part that I wanted to just hit before we wrap up, um, just about like, where do we go from here? I feel like one thing that's, that's I think is really important is I don't want, um, and I'm going to address a couple questions too, but I just want folks to feel like there's a starting gate for them. You know what I mean? And where can you go? Like from a local level. So for example, there's a question here that says, I'm currently a PA on a TV show in Baltimore looking for the next thing after this. I want to get into production accounting. Ooh, it's a need. Ooh, it's a need <laughs> for production accounting. Come on in, but don't know how to do that. Quite, if we can address a, this question, but questions like this, like I'm here, I'm trying to get to the next space. So maybe I'm not even, maybe I'm already in the industry, but I'm trying to like get to the next step. What does that look like? Can you guys speak to that? Yeah, so specifically to your question, you're already on a show. Excellent. That's fantastic. You're already great. Like you want to get into accounting? Ask them. <sighs> um, <laughs> and same. Ask. Ask. Yeah. If it if it was another department, maybe I, I would instruct on if you said you wanted to get into camera. All right. Well, hmm. like maybe there's a different kind of avenue to that. But accounting is so it's numbers. It's so black, white, straight forward. You either want to be in it or you, or you don't. Okay. Um, and there is a need. I will share that. I don't know if they're still doing it, but EP or Entertainment Partners, um, which is the huge accounting like payroll company for entertainment um, productions and just a lot. Um, they were they had a virtual class that would teach you all of the accounting jargon so that you could like absorb and learn the words before you enter the job. So you can it is at a cost. I don't remember what it is, but um, you know if you're nervous about not knowing enough, Boom, research. There you go. You take something like that from an official, you know, spot company, not a scam. You know what I mean? You learn the you learn the jargon and then you would proceed to um, go to the accountant or, you know, even, the, you know, the first accountant, like the person right under them and ask them you know, hey, can I stick with you? Can I follow you? Here's the thing about accounting departments, they travel in squads. Like they, that top accountant takes their, picks up their whole squad and goes to yeah. another show. And they pick up the whole squad and go to another show. Like, it's not like wherever they go, they're scrambling for one, 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 one. It's usually like a whole unit. So all you gotta mm -hmm. do is get in the unit. Yeah. Um, and that's gonna start by just asking. And also production companies are not getting flooded with emails saying, hey, I would love I to that. be a, right. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> My dream is <laughs> like, I'm not making fun of that. What I'm no. actually saying is like no, really. you, your no, dream really? is right in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever you are that put that question out there, yes, your dream yes. is right in front of you because it is missing. Okay. Yeah. People yes. are in need, and that is not the emails that typically come in. You will get forwarded to the direct hiring person <laughs> immediately yeah. because it's a need, you know, that yeah. and there's not enough people. And and I just want to speak to this too, you know like the need for diversity in all of these roles is yeah. so important i had it we had a scenario on a recent show where sherlyn and i shared this scenario where a, a production accountant was 
um, very kind, very nice person, not a black woman, but we were talking about per diem and just the way, you know, she was like, well, we'll give it to, we'll reimburse you. We'll put it on the back end. But our showrunner had to advocate that like, no, give people their money up front. And it was just like a, it was, she was like, oh, why do they need it? And, you know, it's just like little cultural things that actually like become barriers when you're talking about money. And then it's just, it's so many things. So the need for diversity and awareness in all of those roles from production accountant to all of it is necessary. So please, please ask. And whoever that is, we will follow up. If you need to get my information, I could forward you to directly to some accountants that are <laughs> probably looking. But I also do want to say this. go. You could be a production coordinator, too. Yeah. I've seen many people move up into production coordinating. When I was in production, I was in production for a long time before I was creative producing. It's very heavy numbers. It's heavy on the logistics and it's heavy on the payroll and all of that stuff. I basically could have been went into accounting if I wanted to. And I know a lot of people who went from production management into accountant. So that's the real, real next step. If you're a PA, talk to the coordinator, try to, you know, see if on the next show you can, you can be with them and ask if you can help with time cards, if you can help with payroll, that's a on the job way to literally learn because it's so many rules to learn. If you're on a union show, if you're on a non-union show, there's hours, like the best way versus saying, Hey, can you just hire me? Is like, get on a show, be doing the numbers, be doing the thing, and then you'll work your way in. So that, that's my biggest um, thing there. Um, but Nikki or, or Charlene, if you want to speak to in general, just like, and maybe that's a part of it, like the just ask of it all, but what those next steps, like, you know, how would you speak to like what those next steps from where folks are? Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe a kernel of wisdom, um, your like what what's your if you're in a position to have a day-to-day -day hustle keep that you know um i i want one piece of wisdom that a mentor gave me and it's, it's kind of obvious like the difference between those people who who are top 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 of the game they were born into it or if they weren't born into it they have enough current capital to burn to figure out where their lane is you know, and the, and specifically the people of color, black people, black women, it's like, we're not taught the economics of this game. You know, we'll burn ourselves out before we can be, you know, good enough for the next day to just get that one opportunity that we were trying to get for 10 years, you know? So we really have to be strategic about our lifestyle and our lives, you know, our, our economic health, physical health, mental health, so that we can be ready for the opportunity because this is all entrepreneurial in nature. It's like when, when you cross a threshold, that's when it becomes like a regular thing. You know, that, that means you're a business leader and mm -hmm. then you're hiring people under you. You have a business, you know? And so like strategically, it's like, what is your base foundation, your day-to-day? -day? And then, okay, for that person who, you know, is a PA, the show's about to, about to wrap, you're like, okay, what's the next show? you know, and you want to be an accountant, get some accounting classes, you know, like if you have a CPA or know someone has a CPA, learn from them. And uh, like both ladies said, like, ask, ask, because you're, you are one day or maybe 10 months away from the next thing that you really want to do. And mm -hmm. the, I've taken that advice for myself, you know, like there, there have been times where I was just like, what do I do next? Like the show is wrapping, you know, what, what's my next thing? And that feast and famine mode is is not healthy. You you want to own that in control and be in control of of that and the energy that you're expending because in the silences when you're sitting you're not thinking about it you get an idea oh I could just reach out to so and so that I haven't reached out to mm -hmm. in a long time because they said hey this season we need a X you know so I I would say like your next step should be your foundation and your self care mm -hmm. you know. And having and, and having that financial base so that you can be ready for that next opportunity that opens. You know, it's like there is a lot of content and a lot of shows being made, and there's a lot of like silos and 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 groups, you know, that have already been staffed or you know, people channels that you're trying to you know maneuver into. You got to give yourself the time to grow into that or to get into that, mm -hmm. and not 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 be in a fright or flight mode. Yeah. 
I also want to offer that to that a part of the next step is to reframe your thinking of what yeah. the industry is. Yeah. Right. Reframe your thinking. The industry, when we think of the industry, sometimes we can get lost in the rat race of like, I got to make it. Yeah. Make it. And and nobody, no one has, I've not, no one's been able to define for me yet what it is. <laughs> right. And what I've learned over time is that it is where I, want to be is where I want to create is what I want to create is when my voice is fully activated. Right. Which is why what Felicia said before she left is so important that the work and the craft is yeah. the most important thing. And you forget that. You know what I mean? You could forget that in this industry, getting caught in the rat race of trying to make it. The, the beautiful thing about especially the era that we are in, in television, in film, is that you can make something yeah. and it can be seen by millions of people with like no big person behind you. Yeah. Right. If the craft is good, you know, if the work is good, you know what I mean? And so I think that's, a, that's a really important thing to, to consider. And just like, just reframe, just to reframe your mind that like every me working this job, that foundation piece, so important. I'm sure you probably had to learn that the hard way at some point, Nikki, <laughs> as we all did, you know, but it's like reframe what success looks like. You're totally successful if you're a bartender and a writer. You're totally successful if like I was I worked as an assistant at a tutoring company and then I would take off days to go work at Kennedy Center Honors. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I was successful. Mm -hmm. I was doing it. You know what I'm saying? You are doing it now. If you got one job, if you got 10 jobs, you're right. doing it now. So reframe your mind. Because if your mind is in a space where you feel like you're not doing enough, you'll never do enough. Yes. You know, don't idolize. Don't idolize. Like, you know, like, because when you meet your, the person you admire, you're going to be disappointed. You know, like, I think Felicia said that too. It's like, yeah. it's like, don't, don't put, don't put a thing or a people or a group or this level of anything on a pedestal. Um, because, you know, when you get there, you'll be like, oh, this is what it was. And and then also like you drive yourself nuts. Like you you won't flourish and find who your real voice is. And you know, and I think you said it too, uh, there's no there's no uh straight path. There really isn't. It's a circumvent squirrely, you know, whatever. Um and you know, make your mind diversified because you there's so many, there's so many channels now. 10 years ago, it was just like a whole nother world. I am in awe of how things are different now. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is because it allows you to still be in community. You know, it allows you to still network and, and ha have, uh, be around the people if you can't physically be there. Because uh, uh, who said that harmony, the relationships, it is all about, it is about relationships, you know, like do not poo poo that. You don't people this we don't work in silos, you know, we work on teams and um it's important to balance that and have access to that. Yeah. Can I just add a really geeky res response too of just like the geek in me? Okay, now, I'm gonna tell you what I used to do, and then y'all gonna fast forward it and make it the 2022 version. <laughs> so there used to be a like what is the yellow pages, but of production companies, right? Like it just was a thick book of production companies. And I would go through the book and I would make a list of production companies that I knew of because I would watch the shows. I'd watch the credits, which I'm surprised that a lot of people who are in, interested in the industry do not watch the credits. <laughs> watch the credits. You wait till the end. You see production company logos. You say, who is that? Or you usually know the big name of that show. But like that person is usually collaborating with you know, like Abbott Elementary. Okay, that's Quinta Brunson's show. We like love her. But what's the other production company that's collaborating with her that's making that show? Because they they too are winning <laughs> and doing really well. And then and then I'd be like, who's that? Do a little research on that. And then that would open up a gate to somebody else. Write that down. Who was that? Let me do a little research on that. And I think as a creative, you get really encouraged sometimes when you start like actually researching other creatives that are in some pockets of what you're interested in, right? Like so don't sit into what comes easy, if that makes sense. So like, this is the biggest, brightest star and we see them and we get that, but they are working and collaborating with all of these other 
people and places. Like get excited and get encouraged by like researching them, geeking out on them, hearing this like no name producer talk, hearing this like who is that guy, you know, panel. And because they're giving just as great information and they are just as successful, they're just not the face of, you know, right? So like, you know, live in that, you know, space as well. And also to kind of like circling back to the point I made earlier of like, you know, and um, Nikki would just, you know, adding on to it of like, there's no straight path to, I would be at jobs and find a person, whoever that person is. So like, if I'm a PA, I'd be like, I want to be like that producer. That producer could look nothing like me. They could be, you know, old white guy, right? But I'm like, there is something about how they execute. There's something like you can, you're learning, constantly absorbing, taking in, you know what I mean? I'm already different in this space. They already going to, it's already going to be, you know, its own challenge and fight. So I can look at anybody. This is a like open palette for me to absorb and pick who I want to pick from and say, I want a little bit of that. I want to be a little bit of this person. I want to write like that. I want to whatever and take all of that creative like energy and use it to actually encourage you rather than like, it's not a comparative thing. It's like a, mm, I like that. I could do that. Mm, I'm near. I could like, and use that to encourage you and build yourself up and say that I can join that, that team. I am joining that team. You know what I mean? Like, like Alex said, I'm bartending and I'm doing this and I'm trying to get to this full time, but I'm making it now. And I'm gonna make it how I see, how I envision myself later. I'm still studying, you know? So like be encouraged by it is really, my last note, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I also just want to add to, I know we talk a lot about get to know this person, get to know that person. It's just something that I, that is so important and not a lot of people think about this, but get to know people genuinely without, for like, yes, be know where, know the production companies, all that, but also like most people that I talk to that I've made connections with, like, even if we don't work together, we're still friends. Like, I like them. They like me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Know that you're in the long game. Felicia's put it out there. She's like, do you want to get your work made or do you want to have a career? If you want to have a career, make friends. Like, get to know people and actually care about what's coming out of their mouths. <laughs> right? That you. It sounds so crazy. And I, and, and I say it this way, not to insinuate that any of you don't do that. But I know so many people that are like, hey, especially in LA. LA is like, hey, so what do you do? You know, <laughs> like, hello, my name's Alex. How are you? Whoa, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. <laughs> the reality the reality is like, we're just like, we're just people, right? And the more, when people feel like they can connect you as a person, even some of the way high people that I admire, that I talk to, that are running companies that will sit down and have a breakfast with me or a lunch or whatever. They're not doing it because I'm asking them for something every five seconds. It's because I like, they think I'm good, a co cool person. And I think that they're a cool person and we just keep the relationship going. Right. So that's important, which I think, you know, I already gave my, my, my soliloquy about reframing, but I think that that's why the reframing is important because it helps you to engage in genuine relationships you know, and that's what you want in order to get your art made. Um, you know what, there is a, there is a question, um, that I'm trying to pull up here. I don't know that I know how to do this, Candice. Um, but, oh, here we go. I'm a filmmaker. I've been writing, shooting, and editing films for almost 10 years. I'm looking for ways to expand my craft. I want to see my project on a larger scale. What advice can you offer for expanding? Um, I'm, I'm putting this question to all of us, but I, I think the what's important for me to know, and I don't know what you, what you guys think, but I want to know what you mean by expand. Yeah. I think you need to get specific. So... And that's a note to everybody is get specific. So if you've been writing, shooting, editing films for 10 years, that's what's up. Like, that's great. And then you probably have made some incredible things. What does expansion look like for you? And what I mean by that, there's a, there's a variety of ways to expand. You can expand by, I want more people to see the work that I've already done. You can expand as in, I want 
an agent that can help me to write more or to edit or, or shoot larger projects. I want, or maybe I don't want to keep writing, shooting and editing. Cause also you're doing a lot, <laughs> right? So I want to do one of these things. What does expansion look like for you? And, and then I think it, it's easier to, to help that way. And it's easier. It'll probably be easier for you to find the support you're looking for when you, when you like figure out what expansion means for you. Um, did y'all have a comment on that? Um, I would, I'm going to assume, and I could be assuming incorrectly, but I'm going to assume when you say expand, you mean visibility for your work. I could be wrong, but if that is what you mean, then the first thing that came to my mind, and I think we brought it up earlier in the conversation is film festivals. Um, and, you know, um, if you are, are not doing that, I don't know, but um, there are a lot of like local and you can find, there's a website, Film Freeway, you find all of the major film festivals on there, but there are a ton of beautiful local, like homegrown film festivals where you can um, meet other creatives, expand your network that way. If that's, you know what I mean? Meet an editor if you so decide you don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> um, cause you're doing a lot. Um, like you can do all, all of, all of that and also increase the visibility of your work and who you are as a member of your community. Um, yeah. Um, I, I, if you mean expand to, um, what's the word, uh, to establish your career uh, if to get to the next level. Um, I would say that's a great resume. That's great years of experience. Get into post-production. Mm. You're an editor, you know, there, there, it's an easier, it's the lower hanging fruit, but once you're in that group, it's very lucrative. And um, it'll take you, it'll, it'll expose you to the types of things that I, I think you're into um, and to different brands, different networks. Um, it opens up a lot of doors. I, I see a lot of people who are the multi-hyphenate director, writer, producer, editor have success through that channel because it's bespoke, it's tiny. Um, and you know you can have your freedom of creativity, um, but there's also a great need in post production. And just as a general rule for those who are like director, writer, producer types, I would advocate that you get into post production, um, get in get into that space because um, that I I will say, and it's just my opinion. Um, I've noticed the best directors and the best writers are editors. Because mm -hmm. they know story. Yeah. And also they can anticipate what the producer wants because you have to you have to be efficient in, in telling your visual story, right? And the way that Yellowstone does it is different than the way that Abbott Elementary does it. And so you learn voice. And when you learn the voice of a show or of a network or of a, or of a type of shows and you get accustomed to that that's a skill that you can apply throughout tv lands and film mm -hmm. lands which will then you know give you a foundation so that you can go out and make your opus you know make make the thing that you want to make so. love that i have one question that came in and then i wanted to do a quick little exercise uh before we wrap up just um and i also want to get y'all takeaways but i do have a few, I wanna talk about like a list of positions and just we can rapid fire like quick ways to get toward this position. So, you know, we can just, we're gonna do that in a second, but somebody asked a direct question, Alex, how influential was your Howard network in getting opportunities? Um, it was, so my, my, it was it was beneficial not in the um like classmate realm but in howard is strong in the streets okay i'll put it that way <laughs> and so it was beneficial in the like once i got into the industry it you know i ended up meeting um 
like one of those calls that I was making at 7 a.m. <laughs> was a woman who was a production manager and she uh, she went to Howard. And so she like kind of gave me the baton pass. Um, but if I'm honest with you, a good amount of my experience did not come from my Howard network. Um, you know, my first job in um, where I was a secretary, it was uh, at a place called Atlantic Video in Washington, D.C. that since closed down. But um, I think I got that. I, I was an intern there while I was at Howard and then I was able to um continue there and there were a couple folks there that worked there that went to Howard so they kind of had that sort of mama papa bear energy of, of me and help and helped me a little bit um but really what it was was the baton pass so like I think I started on the mama papa bear energy of anybody that went to Howard around me but like I remember the first my first job in the industry was Obama's first inauguration and he had like three inaugural events in that in that 2008 yeah um and so i was a travel pa in the travel department but i got hired from a woman who went to howard and then she actually had to decline me a pa job for the kennedy center honors because i had a full-time job but she liked the way that i accepted the rejection actually and so she kept me in mind and ended up hiring me for the inauguration by the time we got to the credits of the inauguration, I was again serving. <laughs> so supportive to the travel department, they ended up bumping me to travel coordinator in the credits. But then all of those connections, like I didn't just stay with her. I took that baton and then I was now connected to the women that were in the travel department. And one of the women that was working travel on that show got me a job at PBS NewsHour. You know what I mean? Booking studio sessions, like, you know, remote, like uh, interview sessions for PBS NewsHour, you know, and then the, the executive for that show, she's also was the executive for the Super Bowl show, halftime show. And then she was like, you know, what do you want to do? You could go this way, you can go that way. So it was really taking that Howard network, but then like picking up the baton and not like waiting for somebody to tell me what to do. I just kind of kept communicating and serving and that ended up people being help having people want to push me to the next phase and the next phase um and that's how i went on to work on all the rest of the projects that i did on the east coast before i moved to la so yeah the howard network is strong and i think in la is strong too but i actually haven't even worked with a lot of howard folks in la either um i just kept taking the baton from wherever it came from and then kept moving forward so yeah um, so the last thing I want to do before we wrap up, I'm, I'm going to just sort of rapid fire, throw out a, some positions. And then if you guys have a thought of like, Hey, this is what you could do. If you want to, if you're in this space, you can go this direction. I made this up. So we'll see if this works. Let's, <laughs> um, production, it, production management and coordination. So production, if you want to be a production coordinator, uh, what's, where can you, What's, what can you look for today, like right where you are? Oh, um, definitely starting out as an office PA. Um, like that's the first step to, to climbing the ladder and getting to that route. So mm -hmm. I would say start there if you can get yep. into the office. Okay. Um, I would also say as in a, like a secretary at like a local like production house. Mm -hmm. Also, mm -hmm. that's a that's a good way to get some proximity. Production design. Ooh, um, production. You know what? Uh, a, a good friend of mine started as an art PA, um, and wor he was working that for like ten years. Then on like independent, an independent short film and a few commercials, he got art director. He just now got production designer because production designer is the um, the top, like top department head for that category, um, and there's a guild for that, and, and just like with a art director or whatever. So if you can start in like uh, as an art PA, especially mm -hmm. on like some of these like um, college indies, like these you know grad school indies that can get your name out there, and you can get into those um, into that group of people. Um, and then move your way up that way. Uh, you really, you really can cross that threshold easier in the television space, you know, because it's very strategic. Um, 
you know, or if you're in the indie film world, you could do that too. Um, but it's once you get to that multi, like 1 million or above budget, that's when you're like a production designer. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would, I would add, go to your local theater house. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And um, whoever is putting on whatever production, you start helping build that set. Word. I will say also, I'm going to rewind really quick. The invisible jobs in production management I want to highlight are you, it's not just production coordinator, there's travel coordinator, there's transportation coordinators. I was a transportation coordinator for the DNC for two seasons of the DNC. Mm -hmm. They traveled, put me up, and I was literally managing rental cars. Okay. There is there are lucrative positions all within the production logistical space. There's a credentials coordinator, literally coordinating the credentials yeah. for big live, you know, shows. And I, it might be different for scripted. So y'all can call out if there's anything else yeah. under production. No, I, was, I was gonna say, you know, in scripted, you can find a construction coordinator. Yeah, <laughs> like literally, you could coordinate any department. You find your wherever your niche is. It's a thing. Yeah. Exactly. And now that COVID, you know, there, there's that COVID <laughs> officer, you know, I've seen a COVID officer, you know, get like uh, invited to set and then they became a set PA because there's proximity because usually the office is, you know, on the set nearby somewhere. So low key, that's the greatest. Like the gag is be a COVID PA. That's yeah. how you can get into any department anywhere. Yep. This season. <laughs> Right and, on. and get paid and get paid and well. Get paid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't mind like putting these signs up, then <laughs> you're good to go. Um, and and then production design, art department, the the jobs there. You have RPA. You have you have set because set designers they're different than the production designer. Yeah, right? yeah. So it's, uh, set designer. Uh, hair and makeup, you know, um, anything with, with costume, uh, if, if you can sew, you know, get in with the, the, the wardrobe person there. Yeah. Um, it's like ha having access to that. Yeah. Be a runner for them too. Cause co yeah. costume department, they buy a lot of clothes and they return a lot of clothes. So they spend a lot of their PA spend a lot of time in cars and if they don't have to drive it themselves, it's always a plus. So if you are a runner for the costume department and scripted too, that can be real. It's an easy job. You should just drive around all day. Yeah. yeah. But okay. you're in. I'm going to jump to script, script, script department. What, how, it, what are some of the jobs under script department? How could you get connected to script right now? Mm. And by the way, I want to say script might look different for scripted versus unscripted. One of the, I know in the unscripted space, unscripted, by the way, is award shows, specials, ser docu-series, like all that kind of stuff. All that's all unscripted. Even like talk shows, late night, those are technically no, those yeah, those are unscripted technically, um, or they call something else. But anyway, script. We have script coordinators. We have script PAs. We have um, script supervisors, and then you have like a production supervisor. So you have all these roles in unscripted that are making these big grids and sheets that keep the show running to time. Like when you watch the award, the BET awards, the AMAs, the Golden Globes, the Grammys, there is somebody, there's a team of people who have put together that script to the second. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is a space. Um, so I can speak on the unscripted side to get into that. Also being a script PA, a script PA, the skill set is able to make copies and open, use your computer. Right. <laughs> and print. Like, and you learn from there. So um, what do you guys from the scripted side or anything else I missed in script? How else could we get in? I've seen, uh, again, the, on the PA side, uh, those who are like second, 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 second 80s, you know, um, uh, get into that space, which is just a key PA. Um, you know, it, it's... I will say that it's that transition from that to a script supervisor. See, a script supervisor, um, they wield a lot of power, um, even though they're just there, like, you know, taking notes and making sure there's continuity and making sure, you know, that is so key. I've seen a lot of uh, script supervisors become directors and producers and EPs. 
because you know the show or you know the program, you know it so well, you know it more than the other person because you know, if you're not in the camera department, a lot of those roles are transient. You're you're walking on, you know, talent's walking on, director's walking on. Um, but script supervisor, I, I, I look at them as like the neuro nerve for the for the show because they they know they know they have to know so much. And they're always with the director, they're always with the producers. Um, they're always in people's faces. Um, and I've seen people, um, you know, if you can get on set as a PA, you know, just be near that person, you know, ask questions, just ask, you know? So. Yeah. So, yeah. So like Nikki said, the script supervisor or scripty on set, like continuity, that's like, for example, you know, that, um, moment in Game of Thrones with that Starbucks cup at the bottom of the screen that went viral. That was scripty. Scripty didn't catch that. And <laughs> so was, that's why it's so important. Um, and underneath that or in the office, there's like script coordinator. So basically the writer of the episode writes the script and then maybe the showrunner, that which is the lead writer of the that writer's room, then might put their own stank on it. And then they send it to the coordinator and the coordinator compiles all of the things in final draft, recounts the, the pages of the script, takes the script color because the um, scripts, um, edits of the script are in colors. Like that's how we know what the draft is. Like, you know, white and then the thing next is blue and pink, yellow. Da, da. So um, they keep track of that. They make sure the actors get it. They like, so they are distro and making sure like the function is straight. So that's another in, in scripted television uh, job within four scripts with scripts. Great. Um, okay, last one I'm gonna hit before we go is post production. I I think for the and this encompasses editors, post producers, post supervisors, assistant editors, graphics. Oh my gosh, for those of you who do graphics, who design, like you can be in TV, and we are asking for you to yeah. be in television, and you can start at a graphics at a I mean at a post house. Yeah. But being able to make like to use After Effects and create graphics and lower thirds and things like that. If you can design a website, you could probably work in graphics and television. And there is a demand for people who work in this space. So um, but anyway, I would I, for this, I would say every city usually has some kind of post house in it. Somebody's editing somewhere. Yeah. And to piggyback off of what Nikki said earlier of like leaning into post when you were answering that question, which is people in post move pretty quickly compared to other departments. Like, so you can really like go from PA to like producer yeah. in a short amount of time. And what is short it is going to be, you know, a few years or so, but um, you can move really quickly in that space. And then to piggyback off of you, Alex, about because so, there's also a graphics position on scripted television. There's also graphics in the art department yeah. and that graphics person can do so, and y'all are needed. Okay. And that, <laughs> and that graphics person can do so much as like the backdrop, like, you know, when you're watching a television show and the actors are on set, but the windows are open and you can see the skyline, a graphics person did that. Mm -hmm. And then it's printed on the silk and it hangs outside the window. Right. So like all of these little things, hidden or secret jobs, which is like great that we're having this kind of round robin about it. It's just because when you watch something, you really break down like, no, like Alex said, everyone is doing something on every frame, <laughs> television, film, scripted, unscripted that you're watching. So there is a space for you. Yeah. And the reason we're also, I just want to say that why we're saying this too, is like, we're really just trying to equip you with the understanding that in every space there is there are layers of supportive roles that you can get to. Because most of the time our barrier and we're like, how do I get to the next? It's because you're trying to get to the top. Right. But here we're telling you this is how you come in. And these are the spaces that not everybody knows how to get in. And so, uh, Nikki, were you going to say something? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I noticed somebody said website design. It's not a strength for television animation. I, I think just to reframe it, there is a whole neuro nerve for every network and show out there that it's, it's a team in-house of designers all in the graphic space, uh, this creative director space. Like th 
that is a that's a real thing and for someone who can build that website for that show you know i've seen it you know for all yeah. the different shows that come out on bet and paramount there there's somebody there you know managing that website building that website then there's somebody managing managing the social media and that's an, that's a way to get in if it's you're like social media producers now yeah yeah it's like if you if you're good with like you know managing that space you know there's a lane there you know that uh, there, there's so there's so many avenues. It's not what it looked like before, thanks to the advent of technology. And most people, most of us, you know, black people, people of color, we're not thinking as creatively and strategically at that because we see the end result and we're like, I want to get there. But like all the things behind it that make the image that you see on TV, you know, they are digital in nature. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like. The, the things that that require um what is it craftsmanship like you know you have a like you go to a trade school like that those kind of trades um that's a different realm and those are harder to get into because they're unionized but there's the other stuff surrounding that that you you can just dovetail in you know get to a, a small production house go to your local film festival <laughs> you know they have a whole leg uh it's all branded it's all that space you know also just don't forget about your local news station y'all yeah one of my first jobs was working at wbao for NB nbc and and those are t that That's believe it or not they put things on television yeah <laughs> now it might be it might feel corny it <laughs> might feel wet but i'm telling you they have stuff going on and it's a what like i i'm telling you all i was all i cared about was proximity I was like, TV, TV, where, you know? And that that was the direction. Um, we got to wrap it up, but Sherlyn and Nikki, I wanted y'all to take a minute if y'all had any quick uh, takeaways that y'all just want to leave the folks with, um, coupled with your first job or your job that you were working while you was hustling your way up. It, throw that in there real quick. Yeah. Um, you can, if you want to, or I'll... Oh, no, go ahead, Nikki. Uh, let, me, let me get myself together. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, First job, man, I'm trying to, I was like a, I guess like the equivalent of like, um, what is it? Uh, um, what do you do when you are, uh, when you work at camp? What is it? What's the, Can, like, yeah, like, a, like a counselor type thing, uh, in the college, in the college environment. Um, and then, and then, and then. And and working and, and writing and and apprenticing and, and all this stuff and then you know I I when when the advent of Uber came out I Ubered you know one one of the things I wrote came from that experience and got picked up you know so um, so yeah odd jobs there's nothing wrong with that teaching adjuncting lots of that lots of adjuncting just everywhere. Um, and especially especially on things of finance so that's why like the accountant question uh, stood out because we don't we don't learn enough about it um words of takeaways um yeah what was said about interning really sticks with me because there was a time in my in my career where i thought that um interning wasn't enough that it wouldn't lead somewhere you know um because you're playing a game of, of 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 chess, not checkers, right? It's long game things, and I was like, oh, we're just gonna go for me, because like you know, I'm I'm a woman, you know, I'm black, all these other things. Um, you know, it looked like that for a while. Uh, I'm gonna be totally honest. Like there there was a real stop, you know, to to this, you know, like <laughs> like the whole race and gender and color thing. That's real, um, and it and it does take it does take us longer you know, than our counterparts to, to get somewhere. And you're constantly comparing yourself. You're like, wait a minute, how did you just like sneeze? And you're like, so-and-so's like protege. Like how, how did that happen? Um, because, because it's real, like acknowledge the fact that the game is not really made for us and they're already starting ahead of us, you know? Um, so that's number one, acknowledge that. Number two, keep focused and don't get distracted if you really want who for who said that harmony or was it coma if you really want it um you're gonna get it you're gonna figure out a way to get it uh you're gonna write it down you're gonna be strategic about it something that felicia said and um you know um be in the spaces and um 
you know, don't, don't get distracted. I will say, don't get distracted. Um, I think we're in a time now, you know, social media is a liar. <laughs> like social media lies. Um, there's a lot of stuff that went behind that post where someone's like, I did this, blah, blah, blah. You right. know, um, don't get distracted. Go on, go on a fast social media fast if you need to, but stay focused on your thing, you know, and there's so many avenues to get there. Don't be ashamed to start humbly. Don't be ashamed to be local. Don't be ashamed to, you know, go to something that's tangential, like theater. Most people, like you mentioned theater, most people don't think of theater. That is a, that is a legitimate way in. And it's a lane that there's not enough uh, Black representation in. And there's a huge movement. There's a huge renaissance for that if you're looking. And just like si sidebar in Baltimore, there's a huge renaissance happening. But you just need to know where to look it's right there there's like three shows all in the space of three months there's um lioness by zoe zaldana um there's another one from paranel um damon waynes is going to shoot here soon that uh this week i sat by the door with um lapita nyong'o was here it's it's here <laughs> you know it's just not advertised until after the fact because we all be flooding it like hey so mm -hmm. you know have your ear to the ground be strategic don't give up and don't be distracted that's good. Thank you. Sherlyn? Yeah, so um, my first jobs were actually all in entertainment. If it wasn't in entertainment, I wasn't working. Dang, <laughs> I'm that person. That's crazy. Um, we need one. We need one of you. Need one. I, yeah, I am, that, I am that person. I really, like, I lived by unemployment as a choice, and I <laughs> would not work because I just didn't like being in places where I would, you know, but that's just me. You shouldn't go. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to me. Don't do that. Watch this panel, and then I said, "Don't do that." Um, <laughs> so I, I will say two things really quick. I'll lean back into the research thing of it all. Um, you know, there are a few conversations that I have with, like, you know, young, interested people or people transitioning into, and you know, especially coming because I've worked a lot in scripted as well. It's like you know, what is the hot next thing? Like a lot of times when people are talking to you, they're they're gauging where you are on how you can answer. Like, what's your, what's the, what show are you watching right now? What's the last movie you saw, right? And sometimes I know life is happening and we're all really busy, but you know, as you dive deeper into your work and the craft, like we just said, like have an answer to that. You know, know what that is, um, because that is like, you know, so what's your voice? Horror, sci-fi, you know, like that's that's what that person is really trying to, to, to gauge and see where they could put you or who they know that they can help you. So you need an answer to that. Um, and the last thing I'll say is one of my many models is a difference a day makes. So when I was choosing to be unemployed and hella struggling, that, um, you know, I could get a phone call and it's like, hey, do you want a PA here? Wow, a difference that day made, right? That in a day I went from not working to working or I went from like not knowing this person to going to a networking event and meeting that person. So it gave me the push to the difference the day makes. That next day is gonna be better. Today might be not so difference the day makes, right? So like sometimes you gotta find whatever your mantra is to just help you especially on those harder days look the difference the day makes and and make sure you celebrate that like oh man i met so-and-so today and i didn't get the job but it was cool meeting them difference the day makes right like i think being gracious and living in that space of gratitude too kind of helps because then as alex was saying when you serve when you're serving from that space it all comes back to you you know what i mean so that's great. Well, thank you guys. This is um, just to recap for anybody that missed the earlier takeaways. I'm going to hit them real quick. Don't take anything personal. Someone's rejection today could be an opportunity tomorrow. Uh, the craft and the work is the most important thing because it's where the joy is. Don't attach yourself to outcomes. Um, uh, don't get distracted. Uh, acknowledge that the game is not made for us, but keep it moving. That's okay um don't get distracted don't get distracted stay focused on what you're what you're doing um dang i didn't write what your uh thing was just now Shalyn. well give me a nut one sentence of what yours was difference a day makes that one yeah that the one. difference a day makes there you go um and then i'm adding here just 
understand that progress is not linear. Be willing to take a step back or sideways mm. to move forward. Okay. Plenty of times, I'm sure all of us have been in a career where, yeah, I PA'd and then I did this and then I did this, but then I wanted to go here. So I had to step back in order to, but me stepping back wasn't me not being successful. It was in order, it was in order to, you know, move forward. So that's important. Go PA, get a job, you know, print a credit list somewhere, study those positions. You got it. And we're present for you. Charlene, yes, please. We we getting cut off in a few seconds. Hit it. <laughs> really quick. Find me on Instagram, the hive mind unified at the hive mind unified. I am head of content at an initiative where we give information like this all the time for people that look like us. Because the faster we know the information, the faster we can get to success. The Hive Mind Unified at The Hive Mind Unified. Instagram, find us. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Perfect. And we'll be following up um, through Black Arts District. Love the Black Artist Fair. We'll be following up through them. So you guys will have an opportunity to like, you know, fill out a form or something, get some resources from us, maybe do some one-on-ones. We'll figure that out. I'm AV Queen on Instagram. I got to be honest, I'm not on it all the time, but I'm there sometimes. So um, yeah, but feel free. And also, I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make sure that if you if you fill out the form, you'll get my direct email because I really want to see creatives get to the next level, especially in Baltimore. So thank you all. Thank you, Black Arts District.